The Whore and the Remnant. August 10, 2020 by Anna Von writes. Oh, to be sure, the Church had enriched itself via improper means for centuries prior to Vatican II. It had created monarchies and oppression, funded the Inquisition, dreamed up the concept of income taxes, and sold indulgences, twisted the meaning of commonwealth, into the Holy Roman Empire, and committed many other atrocities and sins prior to Vatican II. Despite all of this, at rock bottom, the Church still stood for something, still offered Catholics and other Christians a moral compass. Prior to Vatican II, the Church still knew that it was wrong to kill people, wrong to lie, cheat, or steal, wrong to break one's word, wrong to cheat on one's spouse, wrong to envy and covet and certainly wrong to kill babies or teach that sodomy is okay. You could go into any Roman Catholic church in the world and find the same liturgy, the same mass, the same common language, Latin, and if you asked a question about doctrine, you'd get the same answer. Not so today. In the almost 60 years since Vatican II, all that has eroded away. Today, there is only the form of the liturgy and offices remaining, which gives an appearance of continuance much as the existence of court rules and procedures continues to give an appearance of justice. Communion, where and when it is available, has become a solitary act. People line up, six feet apart, not talking, not touching, not even looking at each other, march into an empty room, grab a packet of communion bread, and use their own hands to wolf it down in the parking lot. Somehow, this is supposed to bring comfort and spiritual solidarity. See, Pope UN plugged, Return of the Old World Order. Congratulations to the happy young couple, soon to be wed. Do you recognize the groom? You should. He used to be a Catholic priest. Churches burn, statues topple, Christians persecuted, and yet, silence from Pope Francis. COVID deaths decline nationwide, but masks become mandatory. Is this Munchausen syndrome by proxy? All this and more tonight from the editor's desk. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt coming to you once again from the offices of the Remnant Newspaper. Yes, indeed. Congratulations are in order to young Jonathan Morris and his bride, who announced this week that they're going to tie the knot up in St. Patrick's Cathedral, New York. Some of you, uh, you may remember young Jonathan, the Fox News religion contributor and former New York pastor. Last year, young Jonathan announced that he was leaving the priesthood uh, because he evidently likes the ladies. And he went ahead and asked Pope Francis to relieve him of his priestly duties, and of course he got the pass. I can't say I was, like, miserable over the last 25 years because I left for the seminary when I was 21 years old. Yep. Uh, but I always felt like if somebody came up to me and said, um, you know, you can leave now and you're not going to be letting anybody down, mm -hmm. I would have jumped at it in a second. And folks get mad at us. They say you shouldn't use the word neo-Catholic. But what else is this other than neo-Catholicism? And imagine if you were a priest, dedicated your whole life to your vows of, of celibacy, to chastity, and, and then you see this character decide he wants to just go off and get married. And the Pope says, fantastic, have a nice time, Father. It's just incredible. It's so embarrassing now. And speaking of the new normal now, thousands of deaths per day back in April and no masks were required at places like Walmart and Target and Lowe's and whatever else. Now, with the wisdom of our, of our jailers, now that the number of deaths has taken a complete nosedive, with even New York City entering phase four of the big reopen process, everybody needs to mask up at Walmart and Lowe's and everywhere else all across the country. And this just strikes me as something like Munchausen syndrome by proxy, where you had these crazy parents, you know, would, would uh, be abusing their kids or telling their kids that they're sick or telling an elderly family member that he's sick or she's sick until they convinced themselves they actually were sick. It's some form of abuse. And sometimes I think that's exactly what we're going through. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that COVID is just a big hoax, but what they're doing with this opportunity is getting very transparent and very dangerous and actually pretty frightening. If you think about this, the vast majority of Americans, of all of us, we feel just fine. I understand there are old people who have passed away. There are even some young people have it for, you know, the vast majority of us were fine, you know. And now we're being scared, bullied, cajoled into 
constantly getting tested, wearing masks, wearing gloves, you know, social distancing and all. It's almost as if they're disappointed in COVID. Like COVID isn't performing like it was supposed to. It isn't quite terrifying enough to keep us all in lockstep with this, this bizarre new normal. And of course, the, the Church of Accompaniment, the new Catholic Church, a new and improved Catholic Church is all in on this. I'll take my boy and I'll leave, Father. Thank you. Father, you closed this church down for two months. We didn't have access to Jesus in the Eucharist. We couldn't even go through the door to kneel before our Lord in the Eucharist for two months. And now I come here and you call the police on me. You call the police on me. Yes, because you're not wearing a mask. Please leave so that we can get in. I will leave, Father. Get my son and I'll leave. Thank you. Can you imagine you go to church and your priest calls the cops on you because you're not wearing your mask? And these churches, by the way, I've been in to some of them to check things out and they're empty, you know, they're empty. There was one here locally that they were passing out Holy Communion in little envelopes and you picked one up as you left the church and went out in the parking lot, you know, um, and there were, there were way too many little envelopes because nobody's going to mass, you know, but they still just, oh my gosh, they're so compliant. And meanwhile... Catholic churches and statues vandalized all across the country. The Catholic Church in the United States experienced a series of attacks this weekend all over the country. The Archdiocese of Los Angeles saw a fire in an 18th century mission church, San Gabriel, founded in 1771 by San Junipero Serra. Meanwhile, in Ocala, Florida, the Marion County Sheriff's Office reported someone set fire to Queen of Peace Church. The Boston Police Department is currently investigating an arson of a statue of the Blessed Mother. Another statue of Mary was vandalized on Friday, June 10th at 3.09 a.m. at Cathedral Prep School and Seminary in New York. And you'd think that the spiritual leader of the world might have something to say about all of this. It's pretty frightening, isn't it? Watching your cities burn down, right? Watching your statues be beheaded and decapitated and smashed and pulled down by the mob. Where is the Pope? <laughs> After all, he's got plenty to say about, I don't know, climate change, the evils of capitalism and capital punishment. And all of us pharisaical Catholics out here are trying to keep the rules, you know, follow the Ten Commandments. We're so rigid, right? He's always lecturing us about that. But he never seems to have anything to say about primetime Catholics such as Joe and Nancy and Alexandria and Andy, who made a career out of breaking all those rules. I happen to be Roman Catholic. Today, Governor Cuomo did something for the first time. He officiated a gay wedding. By the power recently vested in me by the state of New York, I now pronounce you married. Congratulations. By the way, it looks like Joe Biden might be the next president. He also has officiated as, at gay marriages, so we can imagine where the moral compass is going to go when that clown gets in, <laughs> assuming, assuming he's still amongst the living. He doesn't look good lately, but... Anyway, nothing from Francis about this. I don't know. I guess now that Bernie Sanders is out of the running, the Vatican is probably finding a way to back Joe, Joe Biden, I guess. I don't know. But the Pope, here's the question, and this is, I mean this in all seriousness. Why does the Pope seem to care more about climate change than he does about this sort of thing? Why does he care more about climate change than he does about the salvation of souls? When the last, when's the last time you heard him talk about the fact that we're all going to be judged by God and we're going to end up either in heaven or hell. We need to repent. What, why is this guy not ever interested in discussing the stuff that pertains to him as spiritual leader? You know, so why is the United Nations partnering with the Vatican, partnering with Francis? Once they get Francis on their side, and he already is, they can implement these things all the way down through the chain of command of the Catholic Church into the farthest reaches of the world. This globalism, this population control and contraception rot. Your Holiness, I am very grateful for your exceptional global engagement and strong support for our work in the United Nations, including your memorable visit to the UN headquarters in 2015 as the world reached agreement on the Sustainable Development Goals, our blueprint for a fair globalization. You see, and they can count on Francis to be on their side and to not God bother everybody with talk about spirituality and saving our souls, or even saving the lives of aborted babies in the future. Why are major neo-Catholic organizations surrendering to the mob and trashing the Catholic Church, as we pointed out last time? My Catholic Church 
and my Catholic Charities organization is racist. How could they not be? Why is all this happening? It's because the human element of the Catholic Church has abandoned her charter. She has reneged on her claim to be the sole means of salvation. She's abandoned her liturgy, her doctrine, her tradition. She has Protestantized herself. She has secularized herself. And now the churches are burning. What a surprise. Now here at the Remnant, we've been warning about this for a half a century. But here's the question. What if they've jumped the shark now? What if real Catholics start seeing through this, start recognizing this revolution for what it is? What if en masse, those that are left, and granted millions have left the church, but there are many good Catholics who are still trying to muddle through, who still want to be faithful Catholics. What if <laughs> they were to join the traditional Catholic counter-revolution? What would that mean? You see? Because I think that moment has come. And a lot of you out there are going to say, that's impossible, it's pie in the sky, you know, <laughs> what are you smoking, pal? That's nuts. No, I don't think it is nuts. I don't think it is impossible. I got a clip for you that I think proves my point. As you watch this very short clip, I want you to ask yourself, who would have ever thought that the man in this clip would one day, very soon after he filmed this clip, he would actually be, in effect, leading a charge against the revolution of Vatican II? Check this out. As the Holy Father's personal representative, visiting many parts of this vast country, I have come to feel especially close to the church in the United States. Isn't that something? Who would have ever thought? He's Catholic woke, and he's leading now an international counter-revolution. And guess what? He's not the only one. I predict that millions of Catholics who right now are angry, they're frightened by this total lack of leadership from the Church of Accompaniment, they're going to follow Vigano. They're going to follow Bishop Schneider into traditional Catholicism in the next few years, friends, because obviously I'm not... <laughs> I'm not breaking any news here when I say we got to get ready for some serious persecution, for some serious mayhem, mayhem and upheaval and chaos, spiritual and otherwise, in the next few months. So the folks who hang on, who are seeing through what's going on, they're going to become traditional Catholics almost by default in the next few months. Just look at what, our, what, what Archbishop Vigano is doing. Look how much support he has. He was just, as we pointed out a couple of programs ago, tweeted by the President of the United States. Okay. And why is this happening? Why are so many people beginning to see through it? It's because the chaos going all around us right now is just so clarifying. You see, the modern church has betrayed and abandoned us all. And again, I'm talking about the human element, not the divine element. God is still with us. Our Lady is still with us. The saints and the angels are still with us. But the modern church, the men of the church, the modernists have betrayed us. And what have they left in their wake? In the wake of this betrayal, families broken, shattered, destroyed, churches closing down all over the place. In Germany recently, I think they went from something like 800 churches, parishes being closed, merging down into like some crazy 30, I think 30 parishes in Germany and Trier and other dioceses in Germany. It's happening all across the world. And for 50 years this has been going on. The pews have been emptying out, vocations dying, drying up, religious life on life support. Everywhere throughout the church, except, except for in the enclaves of holy tradition, except in the chapels, churches, families, seminaries that are dedicated to orthodoxy, to tradition, to the Latin mass. Statistically provable, I'm just talking through my hat here, the churches are closing everywhere. But whenever a traditional order of priests, such as the fraternity of St. Peter, comes in and takes one of these churches, what happens? It blossoms. It becomes the pride of the diocese all of a sudden. Packed out three masses per Sunday, mass every day, all the sacraments, children, young families moving in. Because it's Catholicism. And see, the church is going to survive because our Lord promised that it would. It's the bride of Christ. It's going to survive. It's going to rise again. But only because of the traditional Catholic restoration it's been hanging on by its fingertips for a long time, but it's getting stronger every day. And part of that is because Francis has gone too far. The Vatican has gone too far. And during this pandemic and during these riots, the sheep are looking around for a shepherd and they realize he's left the pasture. Now look around you right now. There's reason to get up in the morning and go to war and fight for Catholic restoration. It's already happening. 
I'll name just a few names off the top of my head. Bishop Athanasius Schneider this week starts a major international Eucharistic reparation crusade. Please go to remthenewspaper.com and sign up for that thing. Support it and, and share it. Bishop Schneider, where did he come from? He's proof, obviously, that God is still with his church. And Bishop Schneider is leading us now as a shepherd, as a faithful shepherd. Cardinal Burke, look at all he did, especially a few years ago, to open up this, this, this whole this, this, this movement and the need to resist with the Dubia Cardinals. Uh, men like Cardinal Sarah, Cardinal Zen, Archbishop Cordelion, Bishop Joseph Strickland, in offering the traditional Latin Mass, becoming open to tradition friends, and many, many others. Even prominent archbishops on camera telling the world that all priests need to learn the Latin Mass. How can something that has nourished the faith of the generations, that nourished the lives of the saints, uh, quite honestly, that nourished the faith life of my parents and my grandparents, how can we say that this is harmful for the church or bad for the church? Um, I have often said that I, I, and this is a bold statement I know, but I, I, I think that every priest should learn the extraordinary form. So many serious Catholics, they're not traditionalists yet, but they're well on their way. Why? Because the church of accompaniment is failing, because the revolution of Vatican II has been exposed. So many serious Catholics are beginning to see the handwriting on the wall. Which is why now we, as traditional Catholics, have been here forever. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you just found out about it. Either way, we need to get busy. We need to get off defense all the time, cowering and worrying about stuff and terrified that we're going to get crushed. We need to go on offense. We're winning compared to what was happening 30, 40, 50 years ago. The revolution is losing. They're getting desperate. And I'm sorry, friends, but we need to stop relying on social media <laughs> that's run by the devil, quite frankly. Do you realize who's helping YouTube? Right now we're on YouTube. Do you know who's helping, quote unquote, uh, monitor and identify extremist content on YouTube right now? It's the Southern Poverty Law Center. The Southern Poverty Law Center, based in that building in Alabama, calls itself the premier group monitoring hate groups. But what donors don't know is that today the center smears people who don't deserve to be smeared. The center also calls the Family Research Council a hate group. Give me a break. The Southern Poverty Law Center now lists people like Ben Carson, Laura Ingram, and Jeannie Pirro as extremists. But it doesn't list Antifa, the hate group that beats up people on the right. The center's become a hate group itself. It's now a left-wing, money-grabbing slander machine. You know, they've been calling the remnant a hate group since 2007. Look it up. They've been after us. Which is why everyone who's saying anything that matters right now on YouTube is getting demonetized and kicked off YouTube, right? Well, we've already been demonetized here at Remnant TV, so guess what's coming next? And what are we going to do about it? Should I start crying foul? How dare YouTube not let my stuff be published, be posted? How dare Google be so mean? How dare Mark Zuckerberg and his fascist monitors, how dare they treat us so improperly? You know what, friends? If I had their power and their platforms, I wouldn't let them speak either. It doesn't really work that way, does it? So I shouldn't be crying about how mean YouTube is, should I? I should be starting a Catholic tube, a remnant tube, right now. Which, by the way, we're already doing, and it looks something like this. So now Remnant TV's new site and platform is almost ready to go. Want to help us out? Please do, because it's expensive. It's hard to do this and make it function as well as YouTube does. But we need to do it. We need to come up with alternatives. So the point is this. we got to stop relying on the devil to help us fight the good fight. We're like looking for permission from Zuckerberg to fight? And for the clowns at YouTube and the SPLC, this is not an army. We're pathetic. We have to do something about this. You know, years ago, when the Internet was all brand new and exciting, uh, all the experts told us, I'm a newspaper publisher, as I mentioned before, the remnant is a newspaper. Everybody, all the experts. You need to get the remnant off newsprint. Newsprint has been. That's an old model. It's trash. It's garbage. Nobody's going to be sticking with that. You need to go digital because this is the new age of the Internet, right? Well, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to continue to do the newsprint. Why? Because I didn't trust the Internet to stay unrestricted, to stay free, to stay uncensored. Was I wrong? <laughs> 
We kept the newspaper, the newsprint alive all these years. Every two weeks we're going to press with that thing. You know how expensive that is? That's, it's a money hole. We have to do it, friends. And I would say this. If you want to stay connected to the worldwide traditional Catholic movement in the days to come, you might want to subscribe to the Remnant newspaper. Just saying. Because in a, in a year or who knows how long it's going to take, we might be the only thing around. We might be the only game in town because at this point at least – they're not going to be able to monitor, curb, control, demonetize, and kick out you know, people who are using the, the snail mail service like we are. There's this new thing. What's it called? Parlay. I guess it's not that new, but it's new to me because I'm an old guy. Uh, we just went on Parlay. And go ahead. And I think we can maybe put a link down there as well. Yeah, put a link down there for Parlay. We're getting off. We're not going to get off Facebook, but as they've been shadow banning us and doing all their games, uh, we're moving over to a platform which so far seems a lot more user-friendly to folks like us. So... All of us need to do that, especially now this summer. We've got a little time left here to gear up and to prepare to brace ourselves for war. Because you think the bishops are going to help us stand against what's coming? How about the Vatican? I mean, Italy right now proposed new laws would subject parents to 18 months in prison if they object to their children being taught the transgender, non-binary, gay lifestyle in school. 18 months in prison in Italy, Catholic Italy. On July 15th, protests by Catholics and evangelicals were held in 100 major plazas or piazzas in Italy. And here's the question. Where was Pope Francis? Over in Italy. Not a word. (laughs) Pope was silent as a tomb as folks spread out across Catholic Italy trying to prevent parents from being thrown in prison for defending marriage between one man and one woman. The Pope is silent. Just as he's silent about his friends... The Chaikoms, the Chinese communists who recently ordered Christians now, our brothers and sisters in China, to remove crosses, religious symbols, and any images of the, of the saints, the angels, our Lord, our Lady, from their homes, friends, if they want to continue to have certain programs from the state. Now, where is Francis? Francis is trying to make a deal with the communist governments. No wonder it's secret. There's nobody's going to go for it. China's at war with the world, certainly at war with us, and Francis Francis is trying to climb into bed with the Chinese communists. You see? It's no wonder that the Pope's revolution is losing support worldwide right now. That's exactly what it is, why he's been so silent, because Catholics are tired of his pro-globalist indoctrination campaign. They're sick of it. And if Francis's diabolical allegiances now to Chinese communists and to globalists and to Soros and Gates and everybody else and Jeff Sachs, if those allegiances and those alliances are becoming abundantly obvious to you and to me, well, rest assured, they're becoming abundantly obvious to every practicing priest, every bishop, and every cardinal left in the church today. And there are some good ones who are waking up to this. And you know what else they're waking up to? They're waking up to the fact that the renewal of Vatican II was nothing more than a full-on revolution. And that's why many of them are going back, learning the Latin Mass, trying to retrace their steps, their steps to find out what happened. And the thing is, the world and the flesh and the devil are coming after not just us sheep, but they're coming after the shepherds too. When they start tearing statues of saints and priests and bishops down in Columbus and everybody else, you know they're coming after the leaders of the Catholic Church next. Because the Ford has been betrayed by those who should have defended it. And many of these bishops are now aware of that. In April of 2015, Francis Cardinal George, God rest his soul, of Chicago, he famously said, you'll remember this quote, he said, I expect to die in bed. My successor will die in prison, and his successor will die a martyr in the public square. Many of these bishops know what's coming. Excellencies, eminences, Reverend Fathers, it is our duty as faithful lay Catholics, our duty before God, to demand that you open your eyes and start acting like Catholic bishops and priests once again. The party is over. Kumbaya is over. It didn't work. Nobody cares. The Catholic Church is disappearing before our eyes, and the successors of the apostles need to become shepherds. They need to return to the pasture again. Stop with the modernist rot, please. 
and I say this with all due respect, Archbishop Fulton Sheen called this the mission of the laity when he said, your mission, speaking to us, late Catholics, your mission is to see that the priests act like priests, that your bishops act like bishops, and that religious act like religious. So said Fulton Sheen. Let's get started then. Let's let them know. We're done with liturgical experimentation. We're done with communion in the hand and other abominations. We're done with the spirit of Vatican II. We're done with ecumenism. We're done with dialogue. We're done with hirelings rather than shepherds, rather than bishops. When I was a child, Catholics looked to Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre when he stood up and said something has gone very wrong in the church. We looked to him for leadership and for Catholicism and for Christianity and for salvation of our children, our schools, our seminaries, our priests. We looked to Archbishop Lefebvre and now we look to Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, to Bishop Athanasius Schneider, and to whatever faithful priests and bishops are left to keep and defend the old faith, to form the priests and the bishops from our children, to form them in the future, to form the bishops of tomorrow, to denounce this revolution as an abomination in the eyes of God himself. There's no other way, friends. The world is desperate for the return of the king. The world is desperate for Holy Mother Church to come back to them. We're not a democracy. The bishops, the priests, the cardinals, eventually a future pope will have to lead us back into the fight for Christ the King. And for now, especially before November, we need to become the traditional Catholic church militant once again. Pray that this can become a reality sooner than later because obviously, friends, time is running out. I'm Michael Matt for Renda TV. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you down in the trenches. All the evils which always plagued the church continued to wheedle away, year after year, and without a common language and commitment to moral purpose, the church strayed farther and farther away from its mission and became increasingly embroiled in its investments and in managing all the property that it received in trust. A good example of the result is the recent Peter's Pence scandal. The original Peter's Pence was an income tax imposed in the 12th century to help defray the cost of the Crusades. It was collected by the Inquisition on April 15, just as it still is, today. Only in addition to this, secular tax, the Church also began collecting a new Peter's Pence on June 15 as a special offering to give the Pope funds to distribute to the victims of war, displacement, natural disasters, and disease. Faithful Catholics donated $500 million to this cause, and later found out that instead of using the money for disaster relief, the Pope and his consultants invested the money in things like luxury condos, new bank buildings, and Hollywood movie productions. Questioned about this, the church leadership bridled up and made excuses about being responsible to invest the money, even though investment was never mentioned as any part of the purpose of the collection. The simple good faith honesty of spending the money on what they collected the money for, eluded these men. They have become double-minded, saying one thing, and doing another. And nobody at the Vatican even noticed. They took it for granted that they would collect the money under false pretenses, and spend it otherwise. Since Vatican II, when the Church incorporated itself as part of the UN Corporation, such moral and fiscal turpitude has been the rule, not the exception. Selling the body and blood of Jesus as the ultimate fornication of the church. This is where the analogy of the whore comes in, the selling of the body for money. But it is a body that is not theirs to sell. As we all move forward the church leadership is standing silent. Silent in the face of teaching sodomy in public schools. Silent in the face of abortion. Silent in the face of race riots. Silent in the face of gay marriage. Silent in the face of the gross mismanagement of the Municipal United States Congress. Silent in the face of their own corruption. No confession. No repentance. 
no condemnation of evil, no resolve to do better. Certainly it is this final fact that yields condemnation, the point wherein we all condemn ourselves and find no escape for lack of repentance. My husband and I have removed ourselves from association with any incorporated church. We deem it impossible to be a pagan Christian, and similarly impossible to be an incorporated church. For the Roman Catholic Church, that reality was born home with Vatican II. The resulting surrender to the secular world with its focus on money and property management and investments, mainstreaming, and, popular theology, and, do as you will, has borne its fruits ever since. Still, there will always be a remnant and that remnant will find leadership growing out of the stricken roots of the ancient church. The teachings of Jesus will endure all tests. The Holy Spirit will win. In that we can all have faith and confidence, regardless of the failures of men and institutions. So be of good cheer as we sit among the ruins and contemplate the folly that brought us to this point. The church has failed. The governments have failed. We know how we got to this point, in a word, incorporation. We have allowed legal fiction entities to proliferate and promulgate without oversight, until the men running corporations, including incorporated churches, run roughshod over the people who granted these corporations the right to exist. Yes, we know how we got here. The only question is, where to now?